Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good Tuesday morning. This is Run It Back. Look at us. Made it to another day. Stadium Insider, Sham Sharania. Chandler P to my left. Um, how's everybody feeling today? I never asked oh, that. I never asked that, and I feel like I should do a better job. No, this is kind of throwing me off now. I know. So. Did you have a nice breakfast yet? or? I, I haven't. I had a blueberry muffin. Blueberry muffin, great. I ate his oatmeal. Oh, that sounded weird. <laughs> See, we're sharing. Um, we share on this. You <laughs> that's know. just an odd way to put it. <laughs> Shams, I, you know I have notifications set for you. Mm -hmm. um, and the one that came through last night was a bit of a shock to the system about John Moran. Did not see that coming. What happened? Torn labrum for John Moran, season ending surgery. It happened mm -hmm. on Saturday. He had this oh. injury uh, during a training session with the Grizzlies. And at, at the time it was thought to be a, a right shoulder subluxation. And at that point, there's a lot of soreness. He's dealing with pain, obviously. And the thought was over the next couple days, it'll feel better. He'll, he'll, he'll lose some of that sensation in that, in that shoulder. And it didn't. Ugh. And he underwent an MRI yesterday. And that revealed an underlying torn labrum injury. J just devastating for the Grizzlies because with him back in the lineup, they've been 6-3. and three. I mean, everywhere across the board, points per game. His stats have been obviously 25 points, 8 assists. Uh, six rebounds. He's been playing again at an elite level. This mm -hmm. is a guy that's box office, must see television with his highlight plays when he's on the floor. It's just been about availability for him last season and, and unfortunately the start of this year and now the remainder of the year. With him in the lineup, this Grizzlies team, you can make a case, was going to fight for the play and was going to fight for the playoffs. Without him, they've gone 7 and 20 on the season. And this is just, it's Man. absolutely devastating for the Grizzlies, for John ja Morant. You want to see him on the court, and we will not for the rest of the season. Yeah, contrary to what people might think, this is we're bummed. I mean, look, yeah. this is um, just when you get him back, and you could see a, a spark of light in this team. And I also think about the teammates. Like, this, just it's one thing after another. Are they? They're just done. Yeah, I would think so. But and that's tough because, like Sean just said, this is a totally different team with John Morant in the lineup. And like he said, I, I thought they could make noise. I thought they could get to that plan. I thought they were going to be a tough out. Um, and without him, it's just too, too high of a mountain to climb. And, and what's interesting here is I've torn my labrum. So it, it, depending on the tear, you can rehab it and just strengthen it over time, or you can get the season ending surgery. I think where their season's at right now, everything with how big of a hole they're in, I think it's smart to kind of shut them down. And who knows, maybe this is a blessing in disguise. And I wouldn't be surprised now if they start minute restricting, you know, Jaron Jackson, oh, wow. Desmond Bain, and guys like that, because at this point, there's no real reason to even put your best team out there. You're not going to compete. You're not going to make the play in even. So, you know, reset. Hopefully they all learn from this. Hopefully they get healthy and then they have a, a real shot at being a really good team next year. Is this one of those injuries where surgery is inevitable? or Because you, you said like no. sometimes you can let it heal or no. you do that. I, you, had a, yeah. I had a torn labrum and I never got you surgery never did. and it okay. never bothered me again. It happened in the last game of my rookie year. So it's something, again, depending on the tear, how bad it is, you don't have to have surgery. I think with him and this season where they're at, it makes sense to kind of shut him down, reset, kind of th you know, throw well, the, throw the yeah. season out the door. Severity of the tear definitely right. matters. Stephen Curry last year played through a, a small labral tear as well. He played with, with a shoulder sleeve, yeah. and he, he had a bunch of padding on, and he was able to get through it. And play, he played the entire season. He missed a little bit of time initially with that uh, small labral tear, but then he ended up playing. John ja Morant's tear obviously was to the point where they felt they needed him to get surgery now rather than deal with it later. And even Steph Curry, he said at the time when he had it, I'll have to think after the season if I need surgery or not he ended up not needing it but Ugh. I mean it's, it's just devastating it's like you would have wished for him obviously he wanted to I'm sure play through it sure and find a way to get on the court and unfortunately he will have season ending surgery I did I wanted to see them go on a run see what they were yeah. capable of doing when he got back um, almost to the point where I was like Shams tell me this is not a real tweet but it was um, and look silver lining I suppose it may be too early for some to look at that but lottery pick right they're going to add something 100% and it gives this whole roster time to heal it gives Brandon Clark more time Time. It gives Steven Adams more time to oh, where yeah. this team can be a real threat coming back next year. And I look for John Moran. Again, I've had my, my differences with Memphis, but I love the setup of this team. I love the Marcus Smart edition. I love, you know, Triple J. I love Desmond Bain. So I look for John Moran to really learn from this, grow from this, get fully healthy, and have an MVP type season next year. Yeah, when it rains, it pours. Um, another story that happened yesterday, this one not on the court uh, Draymond Green. 
spoke on his very own podcast. Isn't that convenient? Um, for the first time, by the way, since the suspension, one of the most noteworthy things and the thing that probably picked up the most traction was the idea that he was thinking about retiring when all of this went down and that none other than Adam Silver talked him out of it grasped him from the hands of retirement and said, don't go, you're not or buy, something like you're that, not right? It. Like, that's not what it was? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, again, listen. <laughs> I, uh, do I think he was ever going to retire? No, I don't. I think this is a humbling realization where Draymond Green took time away and he lost what's most important to him, and that's, that's basketball. And he was with his family, his kids, you know, hopefully bettering himself, and he's saying all the right things. Sure. Does everyone believe what he's saying? Probably not. And the fact that, you know, he he's he's learned that his actions have real consequences for people around him. Look at his team right now. Steph Curry's obviously frustrated. Steve Kerr is frustrated. Bob Myers left. Klay Thompson is pissed. Seems like this whole season has been irritated, and it kind of stems from Draymond Green and the incident with Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, he's out. So it seems like one guy, when you're a leader like that, you're an emotional leader, you can just as easily become the cancer and become an issue, and I think that was trending that way. So I think this is good for him. Again, he's saying the right thing. Hopefully he comes back and he's more mature and he's a better teammate and then he keeps his emotions in check and got the proper help. But um, again, I, 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 he's saying the right thing. So I guess now time will tell if, if he's you know, actually going to act upon them. He, he, he Look, he said a lot. Um, and yeah, I agree with you. He said a lot of the right things. He mentioned the fact, remember when Kevin Durant and, and they came out and they're like, he needs help. And we all thought, wow, that's actually kind of a big thing. He does. He did need a help. A colleague. Yeah, like, yeah. But he said at the time that he was, he was pissed about it. Uh, and then realize that it probably wasn't meant to be necessarily a negative. Again, is this Draymond saying all the right things? Is it a sign of growth? How are you taking that? Well, I that? think Kevin Durant was was dead on with this yeah. guy, and he needed help. This was this is ruining their franchise. This was ruining their season. This is ruining his career. And from what he says, Steve Kerr, he doesn't want to see it in this way, and they want to end this the right way. And that's Draymond Green coming back, being the leader, trying to salvage this season because – yeah, this is a blown season. This is Steph Curry's a great year. They're all getting older. Everyone's talking about the end of the dynasty, and then he does something like this to even add to that and expedite the whole demise of this dynasty. So, uh, again, I think he he's saying the right stuff. Hopefully, he's learned from this. Kind of similar to the John Morant situation, where you know he takes time away, he's with his family, he finds himself, he grows up, and he comes back, and he can help this team in a positive way and try and salvage this season. Um, there was a lot said. He also talked about his relationship with Steph, that he apologized to him because as a result of all this, there have been some in media who've questioned Steph's leadership. Take from that what you will. But it, we've, you know, we try to read Steph's faces. He's got a really good poker face, but even he's had a hard time hiding some of that this season. Uh, how much more mending do you think needs to happen there? Or do you think they're just like, all right, dude, come out here and do the best. We're good. I, I think he's definitely annoyed. I think he understands now more than ever that, you know, he needs Draymond Green, though, on the court and being mad at him you know having this you know resentment towards him I think is a normal feeling as a teammate as a player he, he let them down at the end of the day and I'm sure Draymond had a team or players only meeting where he apologized to everybody because it's, he's not the only issue on this team again they're all not playing Andrew Wiggins not playing good this year it isn't because Draymond Green you know <laughs> did what he did Clay Thompson's not making its shots because of that so there's a lot of things to point at but again Draymond as the leader of this team as a guy that's been there forever as a 33 year old man he's realizing you can't do stuff like this there's consequences people's careers people's people's future are in jeopardy now because maybe of your behavior so again I think Steph is his guy they have history they uh, there they have years but Steph's one of the nicest guys in the I world know. anyone's gonna let him back in and you know fight for him it's gonna be Steph Curry this this return process I was I guess I wasn't shocked, maybe a little bit surprised that the podcast came out so quickly, right? What is the actual process here that we can expect moving forward? Well, this week, Draymond Green is ramping up. He is getting in position to play. He could play as soon as this upcoming road trip. They play in Chicago on Friday, then they go to Milwaukee. It's a four-game mm. road trip. Uh, so whether it's this weekend, whether it's early next week, mid next week, I think there's a hope that he's able to ramp up over the course of the week and, and get himself ready in position to play. Clay Thompson spoke to it the other night. They need Draymond Green on the court. They know it. They know they can't be themselves. And that's why it was so unfortunate. I mean, he did let that team down. I think he knows it. And he's had a team uh, you know, meeting where, where he's addressed the players. That's where he's been the, the most emotional, from what I'm told, is addressing his teammates, letting them know, you know, I'm sorry for letting you get guys down. And, you know, I'm going to go get this 
his help and he got that counseling and, and you know, he just needs to stay available. Mike Dunleavy spoke to it. Uh, Mike Dunleavy Jr., their GM, he spoke to it. We need him available. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the test case over the next And again, months. time will tell whether he does that and whether mm -hmm. he is better and whether he, if, you know, if he comes back and he acts like this and gets suspended, then who knows what happens. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. And I believe him when he says that, you know, this is important to him. He wants to come back. And he sees the pain and suffering that he, he feels that he, a lot of people feel that he caused. So I, I hope he gets back. The, the Warriors need him. The, and again, this is, we're, we're losing Steph Curry here in a couple of years. So you got to try and maximize that. All eyes on Draymond. That first tech is going to be awkward. Uh, we're taking a quick break right here. When we come back, we will be joined by Miami Heat. Duncan Robinson. Run it back, run it back. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Music is so exciting. All right, Shams. I full disclosure, I've been checking Dejounte Murray's Instagram daily because ever since he put the little black thing in his in his avatar, I was like, oh no, what's going on? Uh, is there news there yet? DeJounte Murray's trade eligible starting today. The Hawks are going to begin escalating conversations even more. The Lakers are suitor. We've discussed they have a need, uh, I think, at that position. And we're still waiting to see exactly how his market shakes out. But one team that has a level of exploratory interest, I'm told, is his former team, the San Antonio Spurs. Spurs obviously building around Victor Wembanyama, Devin Vassell, among their, their, their young talent, budding young talent. They have a stable of draft assets as well. They have a ton of draft picks nice. moving forward. And I think they're going to take a very patient approach in their building process. There's not a real level of urgency of, of, of going out there immediately. But th they're going to be patient, and I think they will be you know, they're gonna pick and choose exactly the spots, huh. whether that's this season, in the summer, next season. They have a runway. They, they don't, there's not a, 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 a real urgency, but they have a runway to, to make things happen potentially if they want to. So that is interesting. You're a resident San Antonio. Sure. Yep, yep, yep. Spurs. Yeah, what are your Jason. thoughts? Uh, I, you know what, that's, that's kind of surprising <clears throat> to me, I'll be honest. That was one of those breakups along with Kawhi Leonard where it seemed to be ill-received by the fan base and we weren't really sure what the story was. But I can also say, watching every time DeJounte's return to San Antonio, he and Pop and their interactions, it's very lovely, um, the same way he is with Kawhi. So maybe we don't <clears throat> always know what's going on behind closed doors. But does he want... Okay, so here's my question. A, what happened in Atlanta? And is, he, is this appealing to him to go back to San Antonio? And how much of that is getting to play with Wimby? Well, he's under contract, you know, four-year, $120 million nice. extension he signed uh, over the, over the offseason. So the, the Hawks, because he signed that extension, they have a good amount of leverage. They're going to be able to dictate, see the best asking price, you know, who can meet their asking price, um, who's able to get to that, that price threshold. And at that point, they, can, they, they have a choice of teams that they're going to be able to pick from. I think it checks all the boxes basketball-wise. I like it. They obviously need a point guard, right? And I would try in all my power to not break up that core four with core you know, four. Vassell, Sohan, Wimby, and Kelton Johnson. Nice. Now, if you can throw in a, a you know DeAndre Hunter or someone with him, then maybe I'd look to give up a Kelton Johnson or someone like that. But I think basketball-wise, this is a playmaker. This is a guy who's he's pretty much going into his prime. He's a 25 and 5 guy. So I think it is a little interesting to go play with Wimby and yeah. be part of this process. And I don't think it's that weird when guys go back. Look, DeAndre Jordan went to the Mavs after breaking up with us and turning us down and then going, you know, I mean, D'Lo just went back to the Lakers. It's, 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 I've returned to things before. Yeah, well, you get back with your ex every now and then. It yeah. happens. So I don't think it'd be the most awkward, weird thing. And I think he is a, honestly a perfect fit basketball-wise. It's crazy, too, because when he, when he blacked out his Instagram, uh, I thought, oh, because it, it was a lot of Knicks rumor stuff coming out at that point. I thought, well, that's an interesting fit, but I had no idea about this. Mm. That would be shocking to me. I wonder how Spurs fans would receive it. Oh, they would welcome him back with open arms. He's part of the whole process, of the whole future moving forward. I mean, they got to figure something out at some point. I know that this season is a wash, but no one was really counting on this season anyways. This is more of a two, three-year down the road type sitch. Well, and like Sean said, they're, they're in no rush to win this year. They're not going to win this year. They're going to end up in the lottery again, and they're going to continue continue to build their future. So I don't think there's an urgency here, but I do, I, I like it. If they can find the right pieces and they don't have to give up one of these young, you know, core pieces moving forward. This will be, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have the Spurs with a, a pick, a lottery pick. We're going to have the Memphis Grizzlies with a lottery pick. Like these are two young teams that are, you know, 
trying to get some stuff done. I, the, the rich get richer. It's just going to be a longer process than we thought. All right, we've got a, a guest now, a treat. <gasps> Let's play a hype video from Mr. Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson, that sweet stroke. This is a heat check. My goodness. Uh, joining us, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Chandler's doing an, an ovation, so we're going to do the ovation here. <laughs> Look at, all right, you know what? It, I love it. Sixth season with the Heat. All, I, I'm not even going to do all that, because right now you're wearing the shirt. It's a champion. That's where we were going to start. Uh, how are you feeling today? How'd you like that? You know, I, I sacrificed a lot uh, for this <laughs> Michigan football season. Blood, blood, sweat, and tears went into this team. Uh, so I, I feel good, you know, just, just proud of everything. You feel you know, justified? We able... All the cheating accusations? I like, yeah. how do you feel about that? <laughs> you know, Jim, Jim said it best, we're America's team. Uh, so I know America woke up this morning feeling good about a, a national mm. championship it's victory. It's all fun and games till he's the Chargers coach I in mean, a few weeks. As long as it's not the Raiders. You know what? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, he uh, he fulfilled his duty. He can <laughs> do whatever he's got to do. We're national champs, so it's it's a good feeling. I mean, how does it work? So y'all are playing at the same time as this game's on last night. Ta be honest, now that it's over, you can't get in trouble. How do you check the score on that? Uh, so actually, our, our strength coach, one of our strength coaches, um, and I'm actually in his office uh, <laughs> right now, taking this uh, interview. He went to he played football at, at UW, so he was sitting behind me, uh, just kind of kicking me updates throughout the game. So we had a, a friendly little wager going on. So I was getting updates, um, but obviously locked in on obviously. the game as well. Full tr full transparency, I'm a pretty fair weather uh, Michigan football <laughs> fan. I was I was crushing them at times throughout the last uh, couple of years, but now obviously they were on top, you know, I'm riding the wave. Obviously. Duncan, okay. last night, win against Houston. You guys are 21 and 15 despite injuries to guys like Jimmy Butler, uh, Bam, Tyler have missed time as well. How would you assess this season despite all the ups and downs? Obviously, you playing a, a big role. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been uh, a challenging season. There's been some challenging aspects. I mean, everybody's going through the injury stuff and availability stuff. Um, so that's, that's never going to be a crutch or an excuse. Um, I, I feel like we've had guys kind of step up and, uh, you know, fulfill those those voids. Obviously, it's impossible to totally fill what a Jimmy does or what a Bam does or what a Tyler does when they miss that type of time. But we've kind of just kind of done it by committee. So I think in the end, it'll blow well for us just from a depth perspective. Yeah, Duncan, you're, you're averaging a career high in points, career high in assists after, you know, kind of a down year last year, you're in and out of the rotation. What, what was the biggest change for you, uh, you know, this offseason going into the season to make this jump? You know, I didn't really change much in terms of my, my preparation um, from like a physical standpoint. You know, off season has always been, you know, I've always tried to be like a regimented guy. I think the biggest shift was just in the perspective and an approach. Um, you know, as you know, so much of, of, you know, experiencing success at this level is between the ears and really just kind of coming into this year. Uh, first off with a level of freedom and, and just kind of being able to be out there and be myself. Uh, but then also really trying to assert myself from, you know, that, that confidence standpoint as well. So I, I think that's made a big, big difference for me. And speaking of that freedom, last night, seven dimes. Is this, this you're going deep in your bag? We're looking at point guard Duncan here, or is this just something with more opportunity that you're getting more comfortable doing? Uh, a little bit. I mean, some of those are, are just, uh, you know, the bands down there somewhere, uh, <laughs> throw, throw it up. And uh, especially when they're switching everything, you know, just try to take advantage of, of uh, mismatches like that. But, you know, I've always felt that kind of like my feel uh, for the game is, is a strength of mine. So, you know, this year being a little bit less just obsessed with like, how do I get threes off? I feel like I've been able to be a little bit more of a, a basketball player and do some different things, which has been fun. Um, Kevin Love said that your life completely turned around um, once you guys started sitting next to each other on the plane. If you said it, it's obviously true. So what, what happened? What do you guys talk about? Oh, uh, life. <laughs> Love basketball, wow. everything in between. Wow, deep. Um, yeah. No, I mean Kev, Kev's Kev's the best. I mean he he brought so much levity to this group last year when we got him, um, you know, a little bit after the deadline, and uh, you know he's he's been a great teammate, a great friend, and uh, you know for me, sometimes it's it's really good, especially after a game that doesn't go well, hmm. uh, to just kind of have some perspective on 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 the plane, you know, and understanding that. 
as, as athletes, like sometimes it just feels like the end of the world. And, and for much of my career, I kind of carried that, um, you know, when a game wouldn't go well, or we were on a losing streak or I wasn't playing well. Uh, so he's, he provides great perspective as somebody that's been in the league for such a long time, NBA champion, uh, all NBA, all-star, like all that stuff. He's done everything there is to do. So, uh, to have that guy, you know, sit next to you on a plane and be able to kick some things off you uh, more often than not, it's, it's not talking about basketball, to be honest. Are you, are you and Caleb, you, is Tonk or Boo Ray? That's still the, that's still the, the game? I stay out of that. Uh, participate. <laughs> Probably in, smart. At point. Probably we, smart. There's a lot of, a lot of spades, uh, that get, mm. gets played on our plane. Um, but I, I, I had a bad experience early on, uh, and, and it just kind of just kind of stayed away. That's like a bad. Bro, I saw Patrick Beverly one time on a flight from Houston to Dallas what? lose an offensive amount That's of money. Twenty minutes that Correct. flight. Yeah, it can get ugly. Yeah. Not you gonna tell me fast. what you have to tell yeah. me what offensive means in the yeah. break. Um, okay, I don't know why I have to ask about this, but earlier this season you had a moment with Victor Wembanyama. Uh, this seems to be a goal for everyone in the league right now. I mean, it, mm. what did this feel like? Yeah, I mean, that, that one obviously, uh, I don't want to say blown out of proportion, but um, I think whenever whenever anybody sees me do anything other than, like, shoot a three, I think everyone just kind of loses their mind. So uh, I think a co combination of the fact that it was on him and he was involved in the play, and then also I think there was just a general surprise that I, I was able to score in a, a way that wasn't shooting a three. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably is about as – viral i guess uh as you want to say uh or as i've gotten in my career the phone was definitely blown up after that which is fun but um at the same time it's also like i mean it's pretty basic <laughs> um, but it's him. a version a version of the smitty but i guess because it was it was against him it got some uh, love so. everyone's watching now every single move yeah. Duncan, your teammate Jimmy Butler, we know he can be pretty intense. Uh, <laughs> he's he's one of the game's greatest competitors, get one of the game's greatest trash talkers. What makes his trash talk, I guess, his competitiveness, competitiveness so unique, so different than, than other players? I think he really picks his spots. I think that he'll go through stretches of the game um, where he's just kind of like feeling it out and he's very calculated in his approach in, in terms of when he wants to engage and when he wants to go there. And when he does choose to go there, it's full force. <laughs> and it's with a certain level of conviction that I don't know that I've, I've ever seen. Um, and it also raises his level from a competitive standpoint um, and, and an actual like play, play style standpoint. So whenever, as a team, we kind of feel like he's going there. We, we know it's a, a good sign for us. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up because a few years ago you were on the receiving end. Um, let's take a listen. Uh, I mean, yeah, I played with some pretty smart players before. I think Duncan's like the, the dumbest one out of all of them. But, um, no, we, we, we've had some smart guys. I've been around some really, you know, Hall of Famers, really great players. But it definitely helps whenever you got guys that are um, extremely smart and know the game. Except for Duncan, he dumb. All right, Jimmy, thank he, you. Peace. He dumb. Duncan, you dumb. He dumb. He dumb. That is such a, he loves you. That's fun, right? Yeah, that was a wild stray, because I don't think I had anything to do with the question. <laughs> um, but with that, with that being said, I, you know, that's, it's all in good fun. Uh, I think it comes from a place of, I don't want to say that I ask stupid questions, but like, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do this thing where like I have a feeling that not everybody understands what's going on, mm. whether it be what we're running, what coverage we're in, whatever. I I feel like I know what's going on. So I'll ask the question publicly to kind of like give some people some confidence of like, oh, oh yeah, that nice is what we're doing. Break the, ice. Like Break the ice a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you said it, not me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think that's kind of where that was born from of like, why is Duncan always asking these questions? Um, but with that being said, yeah, you're right. That's it's, it's all in good fun. So I, I can take that one on the chin. I got to ask as a coffee guy, what was all the, fu what was the fuss about, about him brewing and making his own coffee? Was it actually good? Yeah, it was, it was exp really expensive. Coffee. It wasn't cheap. Um, an incredible marketing tactic. Uh, that's oh, now that means going it into trash. A that means oh, the coffee was no bueno. It's got to be good. You're starting off with the marketing. Yeah, that means the product was poop. I mean, no, I think I think his product is is quality. I've, I've had some big face coffee. It's definitely a quality product, and I think it's See? grown a lot quality. from the bubble. I mean, it's turned into a, a full fledged operation, uh, which is pretty impressive to see. <laughs> Jimmy actually lost a bet with me at one point, so I'm actually 
technically 10% owner of Big Face Coffee. Nice. I've yet oh. to receive Ooh. that oh. legally. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm not holding my breath on the fact that it will, but uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. So I'm, I'm over here pumping the business just off the off chance that he decides to follow through on that bet. I mean, 20 bucks a cup is... That is ridiculous. It must yeah, be um, delicious. <laughs> the, the bubble, by the way, the Lakers bench was Lakers bench was calling you Jimmy Neutron. I'm sure you've gotten all kinds of fun names um, in the course of your career. I don't know why I'm assuming that. I just feel it. Is Jimmy Neutron? Is that accurate? How'd you feel about that one? <laughs> is it accurate? Like, is it accurate? It's like, wild. do you think it's like a? Like, do you think there's a? Do you find it racist, Duncan? It's not racist. <laughs> <laughs> really? You guys, you guys are coming after all the viral moments. I respect it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, here's my thing with, with the Jimmy Neutron thing. And I, I truly have no problem, no gripes, no issues with whatever you want to call me. People call me Jimmy Neutron and people also call me Sheen, which is another character in Jimmy Neutron. Huh. Those two characters don't look alike. So how is it possible that I could look like both of them? If you wanted to say, particularly in the bubble when I had like, I had a little like hair action going and, yeah. and Jimmy's got the, the Johnny Bravo-ish sort of thing. That I could understand, and, and that's what they, that's when the, the Jimmy Neutron thing was born. Um, but now the Sheen thing is kind of taken off as well. So I don't really see how I can look like both. I'm happy to to be either one, but I, I just feel like as a as a public, we got to pick a lane. As you a know? public vote, <laughs> Duncan. We also heard you're a very good ping pong player, and there's a rumor going around. Did you actually challenge Franz Wagner in a in a in a match for a game check, or is that a game check? That's a that's, yeah, that's a, a, stretch. a rumor. I would do that though, because I I know really Francis you're that nice. He 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 doesn't want to hang with me. Yeah, the one that uh, has been elusive to pin down is Obi Toppin. We've been going back and forth. Um, I said on my podcast a while ago that I was better at ping pong than I am at basketball, and he he thought that that he could beat me in ping pong. So we've been going back and forth on that. I haven't found an opportunity to to play yet. You know, Carlisle wow. and Daryl Morey are actually unbelievable ping pong how players. does one become so good at really? ping pong like how's that is that uh, common yeah, to play I, ping pong? I went like to, in the house growing up maybe or something i went to boarding school for a year um and when you're at boarding school there's absolutely nothing to do other than hang in the common areas uh, and play ping pong so okay. that was pretty much the extent of that year god so duncan we all know about welcome to the nba moments what was your moment did you have one i'm sure you can point out a couple things but what was yours um, there have been a couple, uh, early on in my, my first year, I didn't have many games where I was playing rotation minutes, you know, when I was on a two way, uh, there's probably a handful of them, but one of them was against the Pacers. And, uh, that was back when, uh, now a former teammate of mine, Vic Oladipo, uh, was really in, in kind of like peak form, um, with the Pacers and prior to some of the, the unfortunate injury stuff that he's gone through. And. I was kind of thrown in in the like middle of the second quarter and because of foul trouble and stuff and, and was asked to guard him and it, it got ugly for me pretty quickly. Um, he's just, it still is, but particularly at that point, you know, so dynamic, so fast. And I think the big thing with him was just his, his aggression and his mindset at that point to just go out there and try to score 30, 35 every night. Um, so that was a, that was an ugly stretch and, Quickly got taken out and, and didn't come back in in the second half, and probably for good reason. I was I was looking like a traffic cone out there for a little bit. <laughs> I love that everyone has that moment and that everyone remembers it so vividly. Duncan, it has been a pleasure. Um, sorry we did all the weird topics. Next time we'll get into some more X's and O's if that's cool. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Good luck the rest of the way. No, it's all it. good. I, I know how it goes. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> uh, we're taking a quick break as well. When we come back, a little convince me with Chandler Parsons. All right, we had a game last night, uh, Celtics Pacers. Don't love what happened in this one. Uh, no Jason Tatum. Pacers defeat the Celtics by two, but they do lose. Tyrese Halliburton to a hamstring injury. Uh, Jalen Brown, season high 40. Benedict Matherin had 26. Also had the uh, game-winning free throws. Seven of the Indiana Pacers were in double figures. Um, let's start before we get to Tyrese Halliburton. Buddy Heal was called for a foul on Jalen Brown's game-winning shot attempt with three seconds left. You know, Chandler, I'm going to ask you, was this the right call to it, overturn it? It absolutely was not. I don't know how they missed this call. You see right here, he definitely hits him in the back of the head. Okay. And that is just an obvious foul. So if I'm Boston, I'm definitely upset about this. 
um, because there's contact. And again, it's it's a prayer of a shot. It's really good defense by Matherin, but Buddy Heald, there's contact to the head. If Buddy Heald hit him any harder, they're reviewing this to see if it's flagrant when you hit someone in the head like that. Mm. So I don't know how that they review it. It's always weird to me how you actually review it. They see the same thing we say. It's weird, and I know. disagree with the call. Clearly hits him on the head, clearly alters the shot. This should have been two free throws and the Celtics win. Well, this is one of those games where the end took uh, hours um, because after this, you had Kristaps Porzingis called for a foul on Benedict Matherin's potential game winner. That had 0.1 second left on the clock at that point. That call was upheld. He then makes the free throws, as we mentioned. Pacers win. How do we feel about this call? I mean, it's a foul, but I think it's less of a foul than than the first play. So again, I think they got these. I think they got these backwards. I think Boston got the raw end of the deal here. Um, Again, I think the, I think Przingis has to be smarter here. You can't allow the ref to even think about blowing that whistle. Just contest without getting close. He didn't really give him any landing space. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the two plays, one there was contact to a guy's head, and one there was this. So like I I, I, I disagree. I think they got both of these wrong. It's such a messy way to end a game. All of that, by the way, overshadowed by what happened in the second quarter. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton had to be carried off Shams, which mm. is. Never a good sign. What's the latest there? Left hamstring strain, and you have to fear the worst if you're the Pacers right now because if you think about it, Gary Payton II just suffered a grade two hamstring strain, and he's going to be out several weeks. Could be four, mm. six, seven weeks for Gary Payton II with the Warriors, and he was able to walk off under his own power. Yes, he had a, a, had a limp last week for the Warriors, but Tyrese Halliburton injures that hamstring, and you could tell the pain that he was under. He could not make it off the floor um, uh, besides being, you know, uh, carried by his teammates, oh. he was in obvious pain. Couldn't put any pressure on that leg, and so it's, it's just unfortunate because this Pacers team they play such a frenetic pace, and all of it is driven by Tyrese Halliburton. He makes up the, the focal point of their offense. He is their offense in a lot of ways, and um, if he is lost for multiple months, possibly the season, if, if it is a fully torn hamstring. Um, it, it's it's just devastating for the for the Pacers. I mean, as anyone who's ever had a hamstring injury, like there are levels to it. There are certainly levels to it. Not being able to walk on your own is actually a, a pretty bad sign, I would think. But um, man, you had bad news last night, Shams. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say to you for the bummer rest of the show. Of night. Bad news. Uh, but th the impact of this, this is a bummer as well. How big is it? Well, this is this is you could argue this is more detrimental to them than Jaw to Memphis. This yeah. is guys, their everything. He is their engine. He is their absolute everything and so this is tough I, do I think it's fully torn no I think that's extreme I think that you really have to you know to rip it off the bone that, I've that's torn it right off the bone lot. doing what playing tennis Jeez. yeah I couldn't walk that's what I look like really yeah I'm one tough broad see that's true but listen I, I hope it's just a strain because they need him and and but they showed you like they, they can manage to win games with Adam TJ McConnell is a solid vet Andrew Nimhard's now going to get more opportunity but it's going to take everything for this team because the, again this is like the Memphis situation they're they're not a they're not a good team without Tyrese Halliburton it's so big. it's a tough blow uh, especially considering how well he's playing I mean, look, this obviously happened in-game, and the team was able to go on and win it. I don't know how much you can take from that. Um, you've, you, first of all, you're dealing with the shock of your, your star player leaving the game. You still get things done. We saw the ending of the game. It was sloppy and weird. What can you, as you, as his teammates, if anything, take away from a win regardless? Well, it can give you that boost of confidence, right? And this is a team that plays well against good teams. This team's dominated the Bucks, and they've now beaten the Boston Celtics. Those are both two teams that they're going to have to go through to get where they want to get to. So I think it's a, a, a boat of confidence for Rick Carlisle that this group can do it. Uh, it's about a confidence for the players that you know, they're going to get this opportunity now. When if someone goes down like this, that's this instrumental to their team and their offense, they all got to collectively you know, step up. So Buddy Heald's got to be big. Matherin is going to continue giving 26 off the bench. That's going to mm. be huge moving forward when you lose so much with Tyrese Maxey or Tyrese uh, Halliburton. Um, Jalen Brown, by the way, best game of the season so far. Of course, he didn't have Tatum out there. Um, and he does take a lot of heat, especially come playoff time. I don't know if you can make a game in January, or yeah, January, <laughs> what month is it, feel <laughs> like a confidence boost for what you are talked about in the playoffs, but can he? Yeah, I think so. And with the contract that he got this summer, these type of games are expected. And especially when Jason Tatum, your best player, is out, the team is now going through you. And this was a great game for him last night. And when he knocks down his first couple of shots, the whole game opens up for him. When he's efficient from the three-point line, when he's knocking down his pull-up, then it allows him to get to his strength, allows him to be physical, get to the hoop, get to the foul line. So uh, I think he's improved. I think he continued to get better. Um, but this is the type of performances that we got to see from him when he's got the 
biggest contract in the NBA. The biggest contract. Yeah, what I what I like seeing about Jalen Brown right now is you're starting to see him carry this team, like fully, fully carry this team and embrace that. Uh, without Jason Tatum. I think in the last couple of years when Jason Tatum's out, like he's been so much for them. But mm. Jalen Brown can, I mean, 1A, 1B on any given night and 40 points last night, season high. Uh, I think he's like top five now among Celtics all time in 40 point games. So Jalen Brown, I think he's living up so far. But again, everything with the Celtics is all based on the playoffs. Yeah, 100%. It's like yeah, and they go sweet. and win and they get a championship. That, comp that contract is validated. Yeah, everything's worth it. Yeah. Big if. Um, Suns Clippers, a game that our own Sham Sharania was at last night. Clippers defeat the Suns. It's the second time they've done that in the last five days. Crushed them, actually. Paul George, 25 and 7. Kevin Durant had 30. He had 20 of those in the first half. But the Phoenix Suns, right now, when the big three is playing, are two and four. Mm. I'm just going to, do they need more time to gel or do we hit the panic button? They definitely need more time. Okay. I think when you have an offensive new situation like this, it takes time. And you look and people think it's, the don't in basketball, think it's just easy, right? You have all these options, all these <laughs> shots you're going to get, all these scores. It's, it, it doesn't work like that. And I will say I love this matchup. I hope this we get this in the oh. playoffs because you can see the physicality. You can see Devin Booker and Paul George and Devin Booker and uh, Westbrook going at it, smiling, getting physical. So I love this matchup and they're both talented, but the the Suns, they have to figure it out. They have to, you know, it's almost like watching a pickup game. They just take turns. They go one-on-one. -on -one, they go ISO. They play pick and roll and they play zero defense. So it's like they almost think that their talent alone is going to outscore other teams. And when you see games like this, when they run into another great offensive team that also plays defense, the outcome is ugly. You want to see that in the playoffs? That'd be kind of a fun one. I mean, we saw it last year, First but round. Kawhi yeah, was hurt. It. I exactly. mean, I, w I would also love to see it. And I, I look at it more. I was there at the game last night. I'm looking at, at just vibes and mm -hmm. body language and things like that. Whatever you say about the Suns, you say about the Suns. But the Clippers, they seem like they're they're feeling it. Russell Westbrook has really embraced that role coming off the bench now, playing that spark plug 15 to 20 minutes on any given night. And he can change the course of a game very easily. You saw him and Kevin Durant going back and forth in the second half. I think the vibes around the Clippers are great right now. For them, it's like sustaining, maintaining, building, and being healthy. Because if this team is healthy with those three guys in their starting lineup, Zubac is just balling right Zucci now. Zucci man. Zucci man is balling. Shout out Lou. Where's Lou at? Zucci man. You know, his boy. His, <laughs> his boy is balling. I know he would have been uh, going hype today, but um, he's playing at a, at a great level. And this team... Is, is pretty well-rounded right now. What else is tough with the Suns, everyone just assumes that Devin Booker could be this point guard, right? Like, okay. the, the, he's never done that before. So that transition, you can see he's a little timid. He's passive. He's not picking his spots like he used to. Devin Booker is an absolute bucket, one of the better ISO scorers in this league, playmakers, and now you're almost kind of taking his strength away. Like they, I, I think they need to go out Get a point guard. Get some sort of vet ask that. All right. point guard. Did Jordan Goodwin? Sorry, am I taking your question? No, no, no. I was like, because I'm thinking, well, if he doesn't want to do that, then who's going to pick up you, the duties? Yeah, it's like Goodwin is their only point guard on their roster, and, and like you, again, your take Grayson Allen's not going to play point guard. Okogie, anybody can bring the ball up, but you need when you have these players like this, you need someone to to run the set offense. The table. You need someone, yeah, to set the table and let these guys go eat. And right now, it's kind of it's 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 taking away Devin Booker's strength by putting him at point guard. Fair enough. I know we've seen that now in a couple towns where they're trying to switch things up and it doesn't make people feel very comfortable. Um, Shams, we're going to put Chandler in the hot seat right now. Oh. I love I love I when Chandler's in we the hot seat. We we're that. already sweating. I know, we're already sweating might as well. It's a, a little convince me, if you will. Um, I like some of these because they're a little bit wacky. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Spurs will win an NBA title in two years. If you years. answer this question the wrong way, Michelle might come over and convince me. Convince you. I, two I, years. I believe it with the DeJounte Murray edition. Okay. You keep what that. If it's, what if he doesn't go there? Then it's looking like a four year plan. But okay. again, <laughs> they have the ace of spades on their team. They have Victor Wimbanyama, who is a generational talent. Who knows how good he can become, how fast. But with him and that core, with Kelton Johnson, Vassell, I love. I didn't know much about him until this year. I thought his contract Classic, was outrageous. He can hoop. Um, Sohan, again, he's getting crushed a little bit, but I love his game. He he does put, like, he's like Devin Booker. He was put in a weird spot. But he know, yeah, he, he can, he's versatile. He's a guy that I think fits with that core. So when you look at the future of this team and the makeup, outside the Oklahoma City Thunder, they got the brightest future. They add a couple pieces. They add Dejounte Murray. They go and get two other vet guys. Championship in two, two years. Two years. Hope I'm still alive. <laughs> um, all right, moving on to the next one. We're just we're just staring at Chandler while this goes on. Convince me that draft picks 
should have one veto, meaning they get drafted, they're like, nope, don't want to go to Memphis. Uh, where do you want to go? Uh, it's tough because, well, again, these guys are getting paid a lot of money and sure. it's their dream. So the fact that they could get to do that is shocking. But you see the quarterback from USC, Caleb Williams, he, he, he's saying, I don't want to go to these teams, want to go to these teams. Dude, if, Eli if Manning did a whole Yama, thing. Again, if Wimben Yama, he's such a de generational talent. If he should have this somewhat of a say of what, where he goes, what market he wants to be. I think a lot of it would come down to, you know, place that you want to live or situation on the court, obviously, are the two main things. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, why not let them pick their their dream scenario, their favorite team growing up? Maybe maybe they'll even better there. It is funny how the prize for being the best player in the country is to go to the worst team for your next job. It's, it's tough, such though, a weird... but it's like the worst city or team or not the city, but the worst team, yeah. but the most money. So it's yeah. like it's, you, you got to give and take a little bit. It's like a head game in some way. Uh, next up, convince us. Overtime games should be decided by a one-on-one -on -one contest. I love this. I would rather watch a one-on-one -on -one game. You, <laughs> you basically set aside your two best ISO players. We got, you know, the Mavericks against the, oh, the Rockets, and we got Kyrie Irving playing one-on-one -on -one against Jalen Green. Like, I think that'd be way more exciting than a, you know, a five-minute overtime. With if the, it's a Celtics game, it has to be Jason Tatum against Jalen Brown. Because did you see them going one-on-one -on -one during the All-Star game? That was actually, Celtics. oh yeah. That was probably the best part. That yeah. was the best part of the All-Star yeah. game. That we, I forgot what year, maybe a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. So let's think of the worst I think they should now. do one-on-one -on -one and all Star Weekend too. Like, forget the skills challenge. Forget that. There should be one on one. I would love to see Devin Booker play Jason Tatum one on one with a two dribble max. You know I what don't I mean? Hate like, this. that's fun. I think what? they should do that. To? to five. Like, you, again, one on one, you can get hurt. You don't want someone rolling ankle. That's a good point. Like, you know, do you get a referee? Do you call your own fouls? Oh, call your own fouls. This that could forever. never end. Yeah, <laughs> but I think it's way more exciting with overtime. Guys are tired. Guys have already fouled out. There's not the you know what I mean? I, I like this. Some will be better than others because some teams are like, I don't even want to watch one -on -ones. this. One-on-ones, yeah. But we got to. That's the new rule if we figure this out. Hey, um, like, who do they pick? Like, if the yeah. Nets go to overtime, do they pick, like, Cam Thomas instead of Bridges because he's a better one-on-one -on -one player? Do you have a standing choice or does it change depending on who you're playing? I think it changes depending on matchups. Call an audible. Okay. No, I, I, I don't And if someone, idea. if I pick Kyrie Irving and I'm Philly, do I pick Joel Embiid and just Crush him? Yeah. That's unfair. I know. It's got to be like Joel against position. It's got to be position like against Joker position. Yeah. <gasps> Joel against Joker. There's a couple Joker. kinks we got to figure well, out we'll for this one, but I like it. Give us a week. We will come back to you with a fixed plan. Um, convince me that God, NBA players one? should, yeah, there's a million, should celebrate dunks the way NFL players celebrate touchdowns. Oh, these are fantastic. I think they should do this. I think there should be, after any dunk, any poster, any ankle break, yeah. I think they should pause the game and they should let them do their Dougie or their, the their, their gritty. I think they should be able to celebrate. I think it's entertaining. I think the views would be higher. The fans would love it. I think it's a fantastic they idea. They get teed up so fast. Shut no, but you can't. You can't. That's part of the rules. You don't get fined. You don't get a yeah, technical foul. You just stop the games and you give everybody five seconds for a celebration. Five seconds. Those so games would be long as. I don't hate this anything. either. Well, calling a T on Four hour games right good. There. We should bring these to, uh, okay. to Adam. Well, I mean, we could give them to Draymond. Yeah, we'll do and it. And then he could podcast. take them to Adam. Um, <laughs> all right, convince me the Pistons could beat this. This is rude. Could beat the Celtics in a best of seven series with a six on five advantage. Yeah, this one's mean. I mean, there's so many different ways it's you could mean. go about this. You could <laughs> keep the six guy cherry picking and just play five on five. You could beat them five on five. This is ridiculous. The NBA players are so good. We talked about this yesterday. You know how good you have to be to be the worst player in the NBA? So Tell I don't, people. So I don't care how Remind bad them. the Pistons are, their record, all of them will bust your ass if you think they're bad. So uh, the fact that they'd get six and just could have someone double teaming Tatum all game long or whatever, this is ridiculous. I would like the to Pistons see Pistons would sweep four up. Four? Oh, no. Six on five? Yeah. I would like to see this. My God, we need a simulator. This is offensive. Uh, <laughs> and I won't stand for it. <laughs> we'll not stand for the slander. Coming up, we're going to go around the NBA and preview a little bit of tonight's slate when Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up. Yeah. All right, we got some games tonight. Believe it or not, Raptors, Lakers. I'll uh, be Raptors, there. Raptors, three and one. What? You're going again. You got a back to back. You? Back to back Social to back. Butterfly? Going tomorrow Yikes. as well. Yikes. Okay, Clippers. good. Well, then we're going to get to you in two seconds. Um, RJ Barrett, Emmanuel, quickly. They're three and one. They got some scoring coming out of both those guys. They weren't. We're not shocked, right? This was the plan. Mm, I mean, I'm a little shocked. This is a great start, but it, it's it's looking like it's worked for both. The Knicks, I like it. The Knicks look good. The Raptors look good. Um, I like the Lakers here, though. I like the Lakers at huh. home. Shams will be there again. I like it. I think they're too much. They're coming off a big win against the Clippers. 
What are you looking for when you go to these games? I'm going off script. Girlfriend? <laughs> Absolutely not. That was rude. I hate Chandler Park. <laughs> Absolutely not. You're not slightly looking for a girlfriend? A girlfriend? Absolutely not. You know what? If he was a woman, this would be considered misogyny. Harassment? Absolutely um, not. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, to me, I want to see the vibe. Like, I'm big on vibes. Like, body language. I agree. Characteristics. Like, what, what do you, like, the Lakers. Like, Especially. they've been through a lot of turbulence. Uh, lost nine of the last 12, even even after snapping that over the weekend. So I, I want to see how this team comes into the night's game. Can they have two, two wins in a row? And like Chandler said, I think the quickly addition at point guard, and R.J. Barrett, they needed a changeup, mm -hmm. right? O.J. Anobi had been there his whole career. I think they needed an infusion of offense. It really worked out for both sides. The Knicks needed to get rid of some offense and bring in Crazy. a defender. Yeah. And the Raptors probably needed a change of pace. They definitely needed guard play after losing Fred Van Vliet. Now they bring in quickly. So it really was a win-win. Mm -hmm. So here's the question, because we've been talking about Pascal Siakam as possibly being traded for what seems like forever. Is there a chance that all of that's been reconsidered now with this new start? Mm. Potentially, but it all comes down to his future, right? Mm. Like the Raptors, as of yet, have not fully engaged with him on a contract extension or gotten a, an extension done. And anytime you have a player on an expiring deal, it's all about value. Where you value that player, do you value him where he values himself? Now, if they can reach an extension agreement, right. then obviously then you keep him and you go into the year and you have that six to eight month window or six month window where you can't trade him and he, you're, you're kind of, you know, keeping him going into next season. But I think right now they're, they're, they're open-minded. They're seeing what his value is. And it could also very well be that trade deadline comes and goes. Maybe they don't find a trade, and then they're kind of boxed in. You either extend him or you run the risk of losing him for nothing, which for is nothing. what happened with, with Van Vliet. Which we've seen before. Um, Chandler, D'Angelo Russell did not talk to reporters mm. uh, on Sunday after that game. He had 13 points in 31 minutes, uh, obviously been moved to the bench. Is, is this the beginning of the end? I think he's the one to go if they do I've, make a move. But again, I think media blows this up. Maybe he had something at home. Maybe he wanted to get out of there. Or maybe he's frustrated and his time's coming. He does not he care what they think. something at home? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he, He's got a girlfriend. Yeah, he's got to see. No, he did actually he does have a girlfriend. Did he find her at the game? He probably did. Okay, fair enough. Um, no, I mean, listen, I think he's the one to go. I think when they have Gabe Vincent, who I think fully will be in the starting lineup when he's back, they move Austin Reeves back to the bench. I think that he is the obvious piece to go and get a Zach Levine, a, you know, one of these guys that we've talked about. So, uh, Shout out to Andrew Russell, though. He came back 13 points. Yeah, he's three, a, yeah. three three pointers the other night. True I professional. Think if he can come in and make Skip threes, media. I mean, that's, that's why you have him. True profesh. Skipping as he skips media. Like, I know, I was like, that you think he has something else to do. You Sometimes know, you just part, don't want to talk to media. Job. Win, it's lose. Did you ever ditch media, by the way? Win or lose, we booze. He Shams. is kind of a jerk. Like <laughs> Win or lose, we booze. Shams, no matter what happens at the game tonight, we love you. We can't uh, wait to see you tomorrow. You uh, we'll be back in the morning. Run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up.